a very warm good afternoon to all my dear students i professor shoyesh shah welcome all of you to the digital classroom of financial management at agrawal vidya bihar english medium college dear students i hope each and every one of you are well and healthy at your place now dear students in the last lecture we started with the chapter of capital budgeting we had seen various introduction part meaning characteristics then we had seen the methods of capital budgeting also right so amongst the methods of capital budgeting the very first method we saw was accounting rate of return as i told you in the previous lecture there are around five methods of capital budgeting you need to study you need to calculate the sums also for that and you need to understand the merits and demerits of that methods so in the last lecture we saw in detail about the accounting rate of return method commonly known as arr so moving on further this all things we did in the last lecture now moving on today students with the next method that is known as net present value method right commonly known as npv now as we saw in the last lecture about arr right so arr was basically dependent upon the original investments and the accounting rate of return which you are getting particularly right so what is npv method npv method is basically based upon the time value of money as the name itself says net present value right take a very common example students if i am investing 5 lakh rupees in a project on first day that is today so i will calculate that after 5 years or 4 years if i am getting my money back that is 5 lakh rupees over a period of years what is the actual present value of that money right so the value of that money will not be same as 5 lakh there are chances that the value of the money will reduce so what is the method all about it is based upon the time value of the money what do you mean by time value of the money the value of the money which decreases over a period of time and widely used for evaluation of the project dear students here the npv means the total present value of future net cash flows as we will see the practical sum you will understand it better but the cash flows the term itself says the cash inflows which you are getting over a period of years right so that is known as cash flow minus present value of investment So what is NPV, dear students? NPV is your total present value of future net cash flows minus the present value of investment which I have made before starting the project. I hope it is clear, each and every student. Fine. So how you will going to solve the sum? Again, this is important for your theory also and for your practical sums also. We will see one by one. You need to remember the points for the sums also. now the very first step dear students is to finding out npv you need to decide the economic life of the project for how many years the project will be executed right suppose the life of the project may be 5 years may be 6 years may be 7 years the term here says economic life for how many years the project will provide you the cash inflows that is known as economic life of the project so the very first step in npv method is to determine the economic life of the project the next is your size of investment of each project is estimated now what is the total size of the investment of each project it is to be determined so first life economic life of the project is determined second you need to determine the size of investment the third is your prediction of future net cash flows right so what is the prediction of future net cash flows you need to decide how much cash flows you will require you will receive you need to decide the third and the fourth is your determining the rate of discount now dear students what do you mean by rate of discount it is the cost of capital which is going to incur and in common language we can say it is the percentage of decrease in the value of money so if i ask you in the terms of rupees if today the value of 1 rupees is equals to 1 rupees next year the value of 1 rupee will reduce to around 0.90 or i can say 0.95 again in the succeeding year it will reduce to around 0.8 or 0.85 so this reduction in the value of rupee is known as discounting factor 
and we are discounting the money particularly cash flows so what is the first step dear students to determine the economic life of the project second is to determine the size of investment third is prediction of future net cash flows fourth is determining the rate of discount next is you are discounting the future cash flows to find out the present value first of all we decided the rate of discount then we will discount means multiply this cash flows along with the rate of discount so that we get the present values all these steps will be very much clear students when we solve the sum now at last when you will be having all the present values you do the total of that and from that you deduct the initial investment so that you get the answer of net present value i suppose every student is clear with this part this is the basic methodology of your net present value method now we will understand this with the help of one example what is the example students the estimated capital expenditure of a project is 25000 and its economic life is 5 years right so what is the estimated expenditure or is 25000 so i can term it as initial investment what is its economic life 5 years so our first and second step are done estimated cash flow is given for the first year the income is 8000 for the second year it is 9000 third 9000 fourth 7000 and fifth 5000 so what are this this are your estimated cash flows for 5 years as the economic life is 5 years you will be having income for 5 years the third column shows you students is the discounting factor this sums comes in your exam students for around 10 to 12 marks depending upon the paper pattern but you need to understand the working for that so what is it discounting factor for the first year it is 0.909 second 0.826.751.683 and 0.620 for continuously 5 years so how it is determined it is determined on the basis of expected rate of return on capital that is cost of capital is 10% right so what do you need to do is generally in the sum this discounting factors will be given in those sums it is not given we will calculate it on the basis of your cost of capital so what is to be find out find out the npv so we students will follow the same steps the very first step for finding out you can write down in your books the very first step is to find out the economic life we saw it is already given in the sum 5 years the second step was to determine the size of investment so size of investment is also given students 25000 the third is prediction of future net cash flows so that is also i have in the question the next is determining the rate of discount already given the next is you are discounting the future cash flows to find out the present value from here are actual sum starts so what i'll do is i will multiply income with the discounting factor 8000 into 0.909 so you will be getting such kind of table where years are given net cash flow is given discounting factors are already given this much part is already given in the sum so what i did is net cash flow 8000 into 0.909 then you will be having a present value of 7272 net cash flow of 9000 into 0.826 so you will be having a 7434 so what i will understand is students the cash flow of 8000 which i am getting after one year is actually having a present value of 7272 rupees only the cash flow which i am getting 9000 after two years today at present it is having a value of 7434 only right so this shows you the actual net present value what we have done is you have multiplied the net cash flows with discounting factor so you have got the present value what you need to do the students is you need to total up the net present values you will get the total of present values that is 29346 now the last step you need to do what the last step we saw that is from the total of present value you need to deduct the initial investment so what is my initial investment 25000 what is my total 29346 so 29346 minus your initial investment 25000 will give you the answer of 4346 now always remember students how the project is accepted or rejected if the answer of your final net present value comes in positive then only the project is accepted if the answer comes in negative then the project is rejected there is a reason behind it if you are investing 25000 rupees then you will definitely expect 
to have more than 25,000 rupees. So 29346 is more than 25. Suppose for example here after discounting each and every value, the value of your net present value came to 24,000. So there is a loss of 1,000. If I deduct 24 minus 25,000, then there is a loss. It is a negative value and you will reject those products. I hope it is clear each and every student fine so what is the NPV NPV dear students is basically discounting the actual cash flows into discounting factors doing the total of your present values deducting it from the initial investment if positive value comes you accept the project if negative value comes you reject the project I suppose each and everyone is clear with that part fine now moving ahead with your merits and demerits of the method. What do you mean by net present value? You have already understood. So now we will see the advantages as we saw in ARR. What is the first advantage dear students? It takes into account the time value of money both cash inflow and cash outflow. We are taking the time value. We have multiplied it with the discounting factor students. So we are considering the actual value. I saw that value of 8000 in the initial year. After one year it becomes only 7272 rupees. Right. So it takes into account the time value so that we come to know the actual inflow which will be having both for cash outflow and inflow. The second is it takes into account the net inflow of entire economic life. Right? We have calculated the net inflow for complete five years. So for that complete five years we have taken into account cash inflow. Consistent with the objective of maximum economic welfare of the shareholders. Right? Why consistent with the objective? What is the objective? It is of maximum economic welfare. So shareholders if they gain maximum it is the considered as in one of the objectives of financial management. So we will invest only in those projects where the maximum return is achieved. So students the objective of maximum economic welfare is also consistent. Best method of selection of mutually exclusive projects. Now dear students what is the term of mutually exclusive projects? Mutually exclusive projects are those projects that out of a set of alternative you select only one exclusive project that are known as mutually exclusive project. This term is completely used in your capital budgeting chapter. We have a set of alternatives as we saw in the definition only. Out of those alternatives we evaluated we find out the best alternative which gives you maximum return and wealth maximization. So that gives you the outcome of mutually exclusive project. So that's why it's a best method. Why? Because with the project with the highest positive value you will select it. The next is emphasizes on achievement of expected reasonable return. Again it is emphasizing on achievement of reasonable return right what is my expected reasonable return i am estimating very well in advance for over economic life suppose today i am doing the calculation i will find out that what is the expected reasonable return i will get after the completion of economic life so after five years we saw the answer of around five thousand rupees i am getting more so this is emphasizing on achievement of reasonable return then the next is decision can be easily made definitely once you are having NPV of all the projects you can make the decisions very easily. Then the next is superior to other techniques evaluating economic gains right. In other techniques as we will see in ARR we saw we got included the scrap value original investment and thing in uh, profitability index we will saw the ratio of this both methods. In again further method payback period we will see in how many time period we are getting the money back. So again this method is superior to other techniques for evaluating economic gains that we will see when we study the entire method. I hope each and every student is clear with the seven points. Fine. Now moving ahead to the demerits of net present value method. What are the demerits of net present value method? The very first is complications of finding out NPV. Right? What are the main complications of finding out NPV? You need to first find out the cash inflows that is estimated cash inflows. You are not having the exact figure. The second problem is to determine the discounting factor. 
now every person determines different discounting factor it is not necessary that will discount the cash flows only at 10 percent some expert may do it at 5 percent some may do it at 12 percent or 15 percent so it is again there are complications of finding out npv with every change in effect input there will be a change in the answer also the second is your working out cost of capital for the rate of discount is not easy as I told you, to decide the 10% or the 15% criteria for cost of capital is not easy. In case of projects involving different cash outlays, NPV method may not give dependable results. As I told you, some of the projects may be having different cash outlays, right? So in that, NPV method may not give proper results because some projects may be economic life maybe for five years some projects economic life maybe for 10 years cash outlay may be different for every project many projects are such that for first two to three years you are not getting any return but after that they are giving much more return many projects are such initially they are given high return but after that they are not giving such returns right so how can you compare both projects when they are not mutually dependent the next disadvantage is the NPV of a project with longer life may be more than that of others, but it may not be worth selecting, right? The NPV of a project with longer life, definitely. If I am having a project of 10 years and if I am having a project of 5 years, the project will 10 years, there are most probably chances that it will give me much more return, right? So that others will not be worth selecting. The ranking of the projects on the NPV dimension is influenced by the discount rate. Everything students is dependent upon the discount rate only. If I discount my cash flows with a lower value, I will gain much more outflows and I will have a much more higher NPV. If I discount my cash flows with the higher rates, then my NPV will decrease and there will be change in decision making. I suppose it is clear to each and every student. Fine. Now starting with the next method. That is my profitability index method, right? Now, so far we have completed your ERR. So far we have completed your net present value method and now starting with profitability index. If you are clear with the method of net profit value, then you will be very much clear with the method of profitability index, right? What does you mean by profitability index students? This method gives the ratio between the total present value and net cash inflow so net cash inflow and total present value the things which we found out in the previous method that is npv so what does it include it is the ratio of total present value and net cash inflow in the previous method we again deducted it from your investment the total present value was deducted from your investment in this method we will divide the total present value of cash flow by total present value of investment we will see what does it mean this method again is determined on the basis of limitations of npv in npv we saw generally whatever higher npv is there we will select the project here the whatever profitability index is high we will calculate we will see the results after we understand the method for it first. What is PI method? Again, PI method is also based upon the time value of money. Same steps students for calculating profitability index like your NPV. If you are clear, this will also be clear. First, we will find out the PI ratio. We will decide the economic life. We saw the same. Second is size of investment. Third is prediction of future net cash flows. Fourth is determining the rate of discount. Fifth is discounting the future cash flows with the present value that is your discounting factors. Next is your the total of present value is divided by total initial investment. So if you see students always in your exam also NPV and PI are asked together only. First you need to calculate the NPV. The entire process remains the same. Only difference is in the last point. Instead of deducting you will divide the present value by initial investment. I suppose it is clear. Now what was the earlier slide telling you about? If the answer of the PI is greater than 1 except the project. Always remember these three judgments are very much important in your sum to decide whether to accept a project or not. If the PI is greater than 1 except the project. What does it mean? If the total present value is more than your present value of investment then only take for example students if my total present value of cash flows is 100 rupees say 
and if my present value of investment is 90 rupees so that is a difference of 10 rupees which will make my pi more than 1 so you need to accept the project because i am getting more than what i invested next situation is if pi is less than 1 reject the project definitely if suppose my cash flow i am getting in total economic life is 90 then my total present value of investment was 100 so i am making a loss dear students right so my pi will be less than 1 so i need to reject the project if my pi is equal to 1 then it is up to the company it may or may not accept the project because say for example my present value of cash flow is 100 my value of investment was also 100 so i am not gaining anything i am not making loss in anything so all this is your pi equals to 1 pi greater than 1 accept the project pi less than 1 reject the project pi equals to 1 may or may not accept depends upon the management i suppose it is clear everyone fine now what are the merits of this method we have seen the sum of npv itself right so same example we will continue but again we will see one new example before that we will start with the merits what is the merit of this first of all it is based upon the time value of the money as such all the merits of your npv will also be included in your pi so it is a time value of money second it provides the logical standard for making investment as it's take into account investment into consideration it is taking into account the investment also and on the basis of present value you are calculating so that provides a logical standard to decide the projects which you are going to start third is your it evaluates the projects in terms of their relative magnitude hence it is superior to npv in npv we were just again deducting it from your main initial investment here you are dividing it so that you come to know if for example my pi comes to 1.20 what does it signify students today if i am investing 1 rupee after the completion of economic life i will make my 1 rupee into 1.2 so there is a relative magnitude which come to know right so for example if i give you uh, example of two projects in if in one project my profitability index comes to 1.3 and in second the profitability index comes to 1.7 which one do you, will you accept so always the pi with greater value that is 1.7 or 1.6 the higher value we will select so this evaluates the projects in the relative magnitude i suppose everyone is clear with the three merits fine now starting with the demerits what is the demerits involves complicated calculation definitely it is the same method like your npv so in npv related to your discounting factors and everything will also be there in pi the second it gives us the ratio and not rate of return how much rate of return we are getting that is not specified by this pi method it is just giving you the ratio between the initial investment and between the net present value which you have got the third is cost of capital is used as discounting rate the same thing cost of capital itself is based upon some assumptions the same limitations of your npv again repeated in pi the cost of capital is the discounting factors which we are using it is not sure whether they are accurate or not whether they are exact or not because all of them are based upon the assumptions and the last is when cash flows occur beyond the current period pi criteria is unsuitable as a selection criteria right so again the current period is there when cash flows occur beyond that suppose we assume that economic life is only five years but even after five years you are getting the cash flow after five years in six years seven years also then pi criteria is unsuitable right because we are not taking into account the actual economic life we are assuming that it will be helpful for five years or seven years or ten years so that is again a major limitation of your pi method now i hope students you must be clear with the arr with the npv and with pi method we will solve one sum for that for example there are two mutually exclusive projects means out of a and b you need to select only one that is mutually exclusive project the estimated capital expenditure are 60,000 and 40,000 respectively the economic life of both the projects is five years so first two steps are done we are having the estimated capital expenditure that is 60,000 and 40,000 the economic life of the project is five years it is same 
the estimated net cash flow from project A is eighteen thousand. It is the total cash flow, dear students, right? In this sum, the individual year-wise cash flow is not given. So eighteen thousand total cash flow of A, thirteen thousand total cash flow of B. The total cost of capital is ten percent, right? So total. Cost of capital is ten percent for the years by discounting it is three point seven nine. So what is three point seven nine, dear students? Per year cash flow is eighteen thousand. Per year cash flow is thirteen thousand. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to multiply eighteen thousand by five years, multiply thirteen thousand by five years because it is uniform over a period of economic life. Then you need to multiply it directly with three point seven nine. Here the total of your Discounting factor is given as you must have seen in the last to last sum of your NPV. The discounting factor total, if I say, then you will calculate. So that answer is directly given in the sum of your PI. So what you need to do is multiply eighteen thousand into five, thirteen thousand into five, and then you need to again discount it by three point seven nine. So what is the answer? That is evaluate both the projects on the basis of PI. So we'll see. In first of all, net annual cash flow. What I'll do is I'll prepare three columns. One is for particulars. Second is your project A. Third is your project B. So net annual cash flow that is eighteen thousand and thirteen thousand. Total discounting factor is three point seven nine and three point seven nine as it is the same. Now what I'll do is I will multiply this with the discounting factor eighteen thousand into three point seven nine. Will give me the answer of sixty-eight thousand two twenty, right? Thirteen thousand into three point seven nine will give me the answer of forty-nine thousand two seventy, right? Fine, students, you can write it down if you want, right? Again, understand the concept first. Now, what is the answer? Of present value, this signifies one into two. That is one eighteen thousand into three point seven nine gives me the answer of six eight double two zero. Here, one into two gives me the answer of this third thing. Now, what is the present value of investment for project A? It is sixty thousand. For project B, it is forty thousand. Now, how I can find PI out of it? Present value. That is again present value divided by of investment. Present value that is found after multiplying the cash flows divided by present value of investment. So what does it give? Three upon four. That is this number. Sixty-eight thousand two twenty divided by sixty thousand will give me the answer of one point one three seven. Here four nine two seven zero divided by forty thousand will give me the answer of one point two three one. Right. So again, students, first we have decided the cash flow. Then we have calculated the discounting rate. Then we have calculated the present value by multiplying both of them. Then we already have the value of investment. Then we started with the profitability index formula. That is your present value divided by investment. So you will get the answer. Now, which project do we select, students? Because PI of project A is 1.137 and PI of project B is 2 is that is project B is 1.231. So always select the project with the higher PI. So project B here is having a higher value than project A. So that will be our answer. You will select the project B because it is having a higher PI. I suppose each and every one is clear with this part. Fine. Now this was your PI method, students. Again for you, one practice example. You can solve it at your home. After seeing the, we can say PI method. This was asked in your VNSU 2013. It is the same sum which we solved earlier, right? That is in NPV method, just for your practice. What is the estimated capital expenditure of a project? That is sixty thousand. What is the economic life of the project? Five years. Estimated cash net flow is given as follows. So what is given, students? Same like your last sum. Years are given. Five years is your economic life. Net cash flow is given. For each year, then you have been given discount factors. What you need to do is, you have to calculate, right? What you need to calculate, you need to calculate the 
decide whether NPV is positive or negative right so you need to find out the net present value of the entire project this was asked in VNSU 2013 for 8 mark students so I give you 2 minutes if you can calculate it quickly you just have to simply multiply this net cash flow with discounting factor do the total of that present value the column which you will get after multiplying all of them and then you need to deduct it from 60,000 I suppose everyone should get the answer for that particularly okay so what is the answer you all are getting students what is the total present value column that is 77,720 I suppose everyone must have got this answer deduct 77,720 minus deduct 60,000 that is your initial capital investment so what answer you will be getting is 17,720 is it a positive value yes it is a positive value so we will accept the project because NPV is positive I suppose everyone is clear with this type of sums right again in university same types of sums will be asked and again repeatedly NPV PI method is the most important for your exams right Again next lecture we will start with your payback method and with your IRR right so this is initial rate of return method. I hope everyone must be clear with today's part. This is Professor Shaurya Shah teaching you financial management SYBBS semester 3. Have a great day ahead students. Study hard. See you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.